All right. So I guess we start off this review with a little bit of a story time. I um, uh, had a friend uh, who was an old time fan of mine. Um, we started talking like maybe five years ago. Uh, he recently kind of got into knives, um, almost more so than I've ever been into knives. Uh, it's, I mean, that's kind of a challenge unlocked right there because I, one day he just starts texting me about how, hey, look at this new knife I've got, and it's mostly just C3 trash, and you know, mostly I just memed back, son, I am disappointed. But slowly but surely, actually no, all at once, he randomly just goes to like the highest grade knife market, and I kept saying, cold steel, cold steel. And he was like, nah, son, Benchmade. And I was like, fuck, okay. All right, then. Benchmade it is. I mean, it's a good knife brand, but me and Benchmade have always kind of been at odds. Uh, I can't really explain it, but I learned about them, obviously, through their model, the uh, 42 uh, Benchmade Butterfly Knife, which is um, a model that I've always wanted, but it's incredibly expensive. I actually first saw one in the flesh, or in the steel, at a uh, local gun store down here. Apparently, Butterfly Knives... And automatics are legal in North Carolina, if the shopkeep was to be believed, but of course they have to be worn on a sheath. It's a matter of concealment down here, not of just having on you, which actually is quite progressive. No, not like that progressive, like actual progressive. But, um, anyway, I, I saw it when I walked into, like, this weird little part of the store, and my friend almost laughed because everyone sort of reacted as I, like, I actually put my hands in my mouth and, like, kind of bit my nails when I saw it with joy. I was like, oh my gosh. But other than that, I've seen that um, a lot of videos on some of their other models, but I haven't really done a lot of research. I'm familiar with, like, the Griptilian. That's about it. Um, and overall, anytime that I've been to Bass Pro and I've just checked out some of their selection there of Benchmades, the quality doesn't seem to match up with the price tag. Um, and I'm sure that's going to be of hot contention. There's a lot of Benchmade fans, and I guess um, my friend is one of them. And, uh... I don't know, I just never thought it was really worth the money. I always wanted a Benchmade just to say that I could have it in my collection, but I never wanted to spend that much money on it. None of the designs really tickled me, so... He actually even got the one that I've always kind of been interested in for the design. Um, the one of their designs that I thought was actually cooler looking than the rest was actually really decent, and if I had the money, I would totally purchase it. Um, but, anyway, he randomly hit me up and he said, Would you be down for a trade? And, um... For those of you who don't know, I've always wanted to do the trade game. Um, the kind of person that I am, I'm a little bit sentimental, and money doesn't really mean all that much to me, but special things do. Uh, so, um, this uh, one Christmas, this girlfriend of mine got me this. Uh, <laughs> it does kind of match my weird Asian fetish, but um, don't look into that. Do not read into that. Um, it's a couple of these, like, Zen balls. My shiny balls. And, uh, one of the things that kind of struck me, because she always sort of seemed to me to be a person who didn't really understand who I was. I mean, that, that's one of my pet peeves, man. When you're close to somebody and you give them... When you're like me and you wear everything on your sleeve, it's not difficult to figure out who said person is. You know, you eventually will pick up on who they are as a person, but gosh darn, she was really slow to the uptake. But one of the things that she said that I never really let on about, but I think that she understood, which was really cool, was when she got these, she said, I actually made sure that they were from a second-hand store because you seem to like things that were used by other people. Which is kind of true. So I've always wanted to play the trading game, but I've never been able to get anyone down. I've offered, like, several things, most of which are blade-based, and everyone's always like, um, I don't want a sword. And then I say, don't you understand that the future economy is based in swords? For some reason, they don't. But this guy hit me up, and he said that he wanted the, um, Mackinac Hunter which uh, I wish I had modeled it ahead of time before sending it, but um, you can look it up. It's a discontinued cold steel knife, and actually I think it's one of their nicer, more down-to-earth looking models. I kind of picked that up once because this same girl was kind of a normie, and anything that had a black... Actually, just all knives in general, but I imagine specifically, like, the black tactical look really freaked her the hell out. So I, I thought by getting something that had, like, fake bone handles, fake stag handles, you know, um, with a nice shiny satin blade. That might be a little more calming for her, and honestly, it kind of just reminds me of her, and it's just been sitting in my um, Pelican case for the longest time. So when this guy offered a trade, uh, I was like, well, alright, what would you want for it? And I really didn't think, because I kind of didn't really look... I've seen his collection of knives, most of which are C3s. He did, he did actually recently pick up, around the same time that I did, the Spider Co. Tenacious, which is, again, it's hard to get it out from this angle. A fantastic knife. Highly recommend. 
Much knife, such spider co, very craftsmanship wow. Anyway, uh, I was surprised that out of nowhere he just offered his Benchmade. Um, the model that I've always wanted, actually, and here it is. Here's the box. Um, this is uh, the Benchmade 530 Pardue. Pardue. Apparently, it has to. Um, the guy who named, or the guy who developed its design, was named Pardue. He's kind of. He got the name in the same way that Kit Carson of um, the M21 CRKT fame did. Uh, it's noted on the box that you should handle with care. Benchmade knives are packaged extremely sharp, but it has a limited lifetime warranty. Very nice. Uh, it's got their capital, their headquarters, uh, which is in uh, Oregon City, Oregon, which sounds cool. I'd actually like to go to Oregon, but. Um, I don't think I've got the money to go there, to be absolutely honest. And I don't think I could uh, stand the weather. I really don't. I'm turning into a lizard, man. So it's a really cool box. Um, this is the famous blue Benchmade color, and that's the famous Benchmade butterfly symbol, I think because they got their start in the Philippines with the famous Bala songs. Um, he knows more about the stats than I do, so I kind of gave him a call, and uh, I asked for a quick rundown, and that looks like this. So here we have uh, Sam. And uh, he was the dude who gave me the knife. We've been friends for a while. I guess um, you were a fan of mine on YouTube. Long ass time. Yeah, it's been like five yeah. years, six years, something like that. Yeah, I mean, I started watching your shit back when I was like 13. Now I'm like 22, so. Holy shit, why are you trying to make me feel old, hey. son? I know, right? I just made you feel old, right? Hell yeah. Dude, I'm like barely even, right? Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long while. So me and him have been friends for like fucking six, seven years now, something like that. And so I guess just one day you saw the uh, the Mackinac Hunter and you wanted to get your hands on that. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. I actually like did research into the Mackinac Hunter a while back, like forever ago. And I'm like, oh, God, they discontinued it. Shit. And then I remember that you got it and then that you didn't really care for it that much and you kind of just left it in your case. Yeah, I got that a long time ago. I was with this girl who for some reason had like massive fear of knives. Uh, I, I can't even. Yeah, she was massive fear of knives. So your solution was to get a bigger knife, yes. Like, she was this big, kind of normie, and she just thought that knives were, like, for terrorists, so... Very sheepish. Like, so, if you want a knife, you must be a terrorist. Yeah, yeah and so, good. rather than having, like, the black, tactical look of the, you know, yeah, whatever... You know, cold, steel, cold steel fucking, you know, yeah. so on and so forth. I, I kind of thought it would look, I, I don't know, less... It would look better in her eyes to have, you know, the, the Mackinac know, Hunter. Look, it looks scarier. To me, it looks scary. It looks really? like something a slasher villain would use. Do you like, have it on you? Advice type shit. I actually do have it on me. Yeah, because I don't have it to show, so I can't display it. There she is. Fucking A. There you go. Oh, look at that. That is, that is a wicked-looking blade, my kitties. That is like three and a half inches. It looked like four. I thought it was four when I first It is it. actually four inches. Kind of a bitch to close. Is it four? It is, yeah. Oh, I thought it was a three and a half. It, you know... It yeah, might I mean, be. You can get it closed now. It was kind of stiff when I first got it, because this thing's basically factory new. Nice. Yeah. Pretty sick knife. Love the fuck out of it. So I figured, oh, fuck it, I'll trade you my Benchmade. It's discontinued anyway. It's the Benchmade. Yeah, button. and it's, it's we, what I got anyway. was a discontinued knife that I always wanted, and what you got was a discontinued right. knife that you always wanted. Exactly. So we traded rare knives, guys. It fucking works. So I sent so, I sent him um, the Mackinac Hunter via UPS, and uh, they got it there for like $17, $100 insured, shipping, it got there in like a week, and uh, how, how did you send? This. How did you send it to me? I, I, yeah, the mail people. Oh my god! What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Yeah. How hard is it to read directions? How hard is it to read an address and deliver a package to the correct address? So okay. uh, he, he got the to... he had the tracking number, and the tracking number read delivered to address, but that shit wasn't at my house or at my apartment. So at all. I, I, I gave him like a day to figure it out, and I thought maybe they were just slow to deliver. Shit. We eventually got that sorted out, and um, uh, I got the knife. You finally got it today. Yeah, no, it was actually yesterday. I was playing around with it a little bit, but I, I didn't have the energy to uh, to do the review because I was working out. I just finished. Did you uh, catch yourself? What's up? Heck no. No, I have the I have the foo. That doesn't happen to me, man. Go ahead and uh, do me a favor and go over the stats of this real quick. You you've kind of gotten into knives okay. like over the past like. I don't know, I guess year or so? Year. And you now uh, know, year. like, uh, more about steel go. quality and whatnot than I do. You know, like, all the stats and stuff, so I figured I would just let you talk about it. Okay, well, I mean, the first thing to talk about with the 530 in general, just any of Pardue's design knives, uh, you can see it there. That spear point blade right there is literally the most handy shit for EDC. You would not think so, based on the style, because it looks like it's designed for killing people, which, you know, whatever. 
whatever you want to get into defense on knives, but um, it's 154 CM, which is like a super butt fuck strong steel that they used to make aircraft with, and um, it's just one of the super steels. Like, it's comparable to S30V, CPM style steels, carpenter steels, any kind of modern super tool steel. Like, that's what you're getting into. Now, with my experience with it, that little knife is one tough son of a bitch. I will just go ahead and say that right now. That thing is the box ender. It is the box destroyer. It will cut through fucking anything with, like, little effort. I actually didn't even sharpen it when I sent it to Paul, and that's, like, after a month of use, the edge is still sharp. It's still, like, completely hair shaving sharp before I sent it. So, I mean, go ahead and, like, try to slice shit on camera. I mean, it's going to be pretty fucking easy. You should slice about as good as your spider go, honestly. But, like, another thing about that knife, one of the main attributes and selling points of it is it's, like, weighs about an ounce, about 1.8 ounces. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, it is super point. light, yeah. It's, it's extremely light. That thing disappears in your pockets. The steel quality. Uh, corrosion resistance? Holy shit. That thing, I mean, it's it's pretty good. I haven't had it rust. Then again, I live in kind of a desert area, so I haven't had any rust problems with it so far in my experience, but um, I read that it has pretty good, it's a pretty good high-grade stainless. It resists staining mm. and rust pretty good. In general, 154CM is like one of the better super steels you can get out there besides S30V. It's like a step below S30V in terms of blade quality. What kind of knife has S30V? Oh, you're talking, dude, like Spyderco Manix 2, uh, paramilitary, uh, a lot of bench mates use uh, S30V. There's like special group Killiams out there that have it. There's all kinds of knives out mm. there that are like 150 or above that use S30V. I think um, some of the new Spyderco is the Shaman line for the Spyderco this year is actually going to do S30V. Some of them are CPM S30V for the Manix 2 as well. I was actually just reading that before we started this. Because, um, and again, you know, S30V is one of those steels that everyone masturbates over in the knife world. So. Hmm. So I, I had a quick question because I actually, I couldn't find it in the material. What, um, where was this knife made? Uh, here in the USA, I believe. Yeah, there's no markings to let me know, so I don't actually... I can't really confirm that without I'm checking really, the website. I know where it came from. I know where it shipped from, but I don't know where specifically it was made. I don't know which factory put it out. Like, I know it was... I know it came from Michigan. I can tell you that much. Nice. Because I think yeah, they used so to be made in the Philippines, didn't they? What? Didn't uh, Benchmade used to make in the Philippines? Yeah, I think so. But I, I wasn't... I'm not super sure on that. I mean, Benchmade has kind of undergone quite a few changes over mm -hmm. the years. I mean... You were there when they almost got, like, sued, right? Was that over the Axis versus Triad Lock? I think they did the yeah, suing. That was, yeah, I think they, I think they, there was, like, this drama. Like, people were saying, fuck Benchmade, all this other shit. They tried, I yeah, because they tried to sue back. Cold Steel for the Triad, and basically all these other yeah. knife makers were saying, well, you know, you, you're being like Samuel L. Colt, who was saying, like, there's this whole fucking to-do about Samuel L. Colt versus, um... Uh, Smith & Wesson, the company where, because Samuel L. Colt right. was the first to make a revolver, a, you know, wheel gun that goes at, you know, cycles, rounds through a cylinder. Any, no matter how um, intricate or different or unique the design around that idea that was made by Smith & Wesson over, like, 30 years of production, the patent that, you know, all, all the time Samuel Colt went to court and basically said, ah, this is violating my patent, and the U.S. government kept upholding it and upholding it until, like, the early 1900s when, like, eventually they decided... Okay, you can't own a concept of mechanical construction if it is very similar to it. It's still allowed. Yeah, like, hey, there was some weird shit going on in general in the 1900s in America. I mean, for example, uh, like the shit between Samuel Colt and Smith and Wesson, right? Yeah. You, you bring up a good point with Benchmade and Spyderco and Benchmade and fucking Cold Steel. I mean, we have these three main companies, right? That mm -hmm. I think the big three. They're the big three in my mind, which is Spyderco, Benchmade, and fucking Cold Steel. Yeah, I would There's say those, are, the, those are like probably the three best knife manufacturers right now. Right, I, I would, I would think so. In terms of like folding knives, there are like there are certain knives that I've always wanted to get my hands on. Like, um, there's a brand called Merck Works. I'm not even making that name up, and it's really weird because they have. And you should go and check out their stats and let me know what you think about them. They are actually the people who inspired the knife. It almost looks identical to the knife that Leon Kennedy carries in Resident Evil Four. And supposedly they rep out as this company that only produces knives for super secret Billy Badass secret squirrel mercenary motherfuckers working weird jobs in Southern America. But the thing is, Foxhound. They're yeah, they only produce for Foxhound, but Foxhound. their knives are four hundred dollars a shot. 
And my question, okay, the thing is, is you can't actually find anyone who will do an actual torture test or review of them because no one wants to spend yeah, $400 mean, on a knife and then run it through the grinder. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, uh, there's the Chris Reeve Sabenza, which has been talked about to death. I don't know if you really want to go. Do you know about that? No, I don't know anything about You've that. You've never heard of the Chris Reeve Sabenza? Nope. You've never heard of the Sabenza? Nah. What? How? I, maybe like, I have one time, but I, I really don't know. Okay, well, the Chris Reeve Sabenza, right, if we're talking S30B again, uh, it's this knife that's, like, designed by this guy named Chris Reeve. He's mm. a famous knife designer. And they're run, like, 400, 500 a pop. Yeah. And they're really basic, bare-bones, uh, plain-jane folding knives, but they're built so well, and the quality is just so high that people just go apeshit and buy them anyway. For example, uh, Cutlery Lover, Jeff, I'll give him a shout-out. Uh, he has a Sabenza, and he says, you know what, it was worth every penny. I love everything about Do, it. You know that Cutlery Lover watches my vids, think, right? You know? Yeah, I know. I've you seen him comment, and every time I keep on meaning to like do a shout out to him or something yeah, like that, which is so pointless because yeah, his channel is like you infinitely larger than mine. Your other video, with this, the Spiderco video about the the thing that I told you about. Yeah, I yeah. The friend who told him about the Spiderco things because they're a thing, and you know. So, so yeah, that was uh, that was his kind of two thoughts on uh, knives in general and more than just the the Benchmade model. Opening up the box, open. Yeah. Comes with this really nice foam on the inside that is really soft and has a really cool pattern to it. Um, it's not uber expensive, but it's you know it's very much part of the presentation. Most knives do not come as such. Uh, on the inside is a and it has a damn drawstring for God's sake. Is a little uh, Benchmade pouch to keep your drugs in. Has the the logo on it. And I would look in the knife on the inside, but there's also some extra bits of paper that uh, Ashens would dump out and then usually make fun of the English translation on there. One of the first things that falls out is like a little um, tab that uh, on this back side basically mentions that this is for right hand carry, um, which is the correct way to be. Uh, and then it says genuine Axis mechanics. The Axis lock, if I remember, if I recall correctly, is basically one of the first attempts to reinforce the lockback mechanisms that most folding knives have. And I think one of the people who helped work on that design would later on go on to work for Cold Steel with creating the triad lock, which if you can see there's a little um, titanium pin right in there. Uh, it's a small amount of titanium, it, uh, that's probably what half of the price of the knife goes into. And what that does is, when it locks up, it creates a, uh, you can look at the, the, the graphs on the internet explaining this, but it basically, like, greatly reinforces the front and back play of this. I've actually, with a Recon 1, I think it might have been color, Cutlery Lover, he, um, he basically attempted to see if he could make that lock fail with a Recon 1 by trying to hack down a tree, and I think ultimately the blade steel snapped, which the blade steel on these are fairly fantastic. Um, I think this is OS 8 that has the glaze with, um, it's got the Teflon coating on there. Um, it's actually got some stickiness on there because I was using it to do some food processing. Because my American lawmen, I do not treat nicely. This is, unfortunately, the red-headed, unloved stepchild. But again, really good knife. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not a good knife. But uh, I think Cold Steel got into some trouble um, legally when um, Benchmade attempted to... I sue um, them for, you know, patent infringement, even though the triad lock has extreme differences between it and the axis lock, but basically what started the revolution in knives right now of making these lockups just super, super sturdy um, was uh, Benchmade. One of the other slips of paper that it comes with talks about the limited lifetime warranty. And uh, I could go through all of this, but it, that would be incredibly boring. Uh, it says make sure to lube up your knives. I always use lube, okay? Uh, but I use super good lube. Uh, it talks about sharpening and how to do that. Um, oh, wow. I didn't know this. There are three classes of Benchmade product. Black class. Designed, developed, and tested for extreme duty. They are the preferred cutting tools of elite military. Elite military. <laughs> it's like, oh, never mind. Uh, elite military, law enforcement, and public safety personnel around the globe. The blue class, which I'm assuming this is. The heart of Benchmade. The heart of the cards, Yugi. The heart of Benchmade. <laughs> Can we make like a Yu-Gi-Oh style anime based around like swords and knives? Like that would be like the most autistic, weeb, powerful thing that I could possibly imagine, and I think it's amazing. 
Um, let's see, whether it's for use on the job or in the backcountry, these products are designed for those who really appreciate the difference a high-performance cutting tool can make. And then Gold Class, which I've never even seen before. Bridging the gap between custom and manufactured, Gold Class products are made with premium techniques and materials. It's quite simply the best of the best. We are the best of the best of the best of the best, sir. <laughs> he doesn't even really know why we're here, but he, he, he knows he's the best of the best. So, that's the packaging it comes with. Let's take a look. First of all, this bag is really, like, overly nice. It's... I find it all, like, a little bit ridiculous. Again, like... No, hey, Benchmade is a good brand. I don't think they're worth the money. I'm super glad that I could do this trade because this is the only way I was ever going to get a Benchmade. I don't... I was not going to spend that kind of money on it, man. And the fact that it's the model that I've always wanted is, like, super appreciated. This, this may be fate. But enough talk. Let's get down to it. Let's get the sheath off. Yeah. So that's the knife that we're looking at. Um... I could sit here with like a ruler and go over the specs and be super autistic about it, or I could just do the Tolstoy thing, which is where I kind of twizzle up my fingers and play with it a bit, possibly break it, and then talk a lot about like my past and and, and my future and my present. Um, it's the first thing that you notice is it's incredibly lightweight. Like I think one of the lightest knives I have ever handled in in all of my knifey days. Um, I bought a cold steel that was very similar to this design that um, I'll probably have to do a review on a later date. And by comparison, this thing is just so heavy. I'm assuming that the blade would hold up better. The steel on this is actually, I guess, what my buddy would refer to as a super steel. It um, it's some kind of kind of carpenter steel. I noticed that it does not rust as quickly, if at all, um, at the same rate that the Aus 8 that most of my old cold steel knives are. It's just big and thick and chunky, and honestly, it reminds me of one of the knives from Resident Evil 4. Reminds me of, like, Krauser's knife. Uh, I carry this into the bush with me. I, I really don't... into the bush. There's somebody out there who's actually, like, been to, like, you know, Grenada, or been to Guam, or something like that, and is like, dude, you live in North Carolina, shut up. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But, this is what I bring, this is what I would stab a coyote with, if I absolutely had to. And I'll probably give it a full review later, but, basically, I bought this because I really liked that whole kind of straight, dirk look, and this is like the tiny brother of it. Cold Steel does make a smaller version, but this was, I think, the first knife that I've ever seen that was like that. Um, the blade has a very sexy finish to it, even after my buddy has put it through all the paces that he did. It's got the Benchmade logo right there, and then on the back, it says Mel Pardu, which I imagine is the gentleman who designed the knife. And my camera won't focus on it. One of the biggest things that you notice, I guess, is this, and this is what they refer to as the access lock. This was kind of the major selling point, uh, of this knife, was that, uh, the kind of cool way that it has a one, both a reinforced handle that does not, or a reinforced lock that does not allow for much play forward and backward. Uh, not as much as you would on another type of uh, knife that did not have that kind of access lock. Although I'm, I'm going to point out this is not as strong as a triad lock. I can feel a little bit of forward and backward play. And of course, side to side, yeah, you feel a lot of that. Um, not a lot, but more than you would, than I am used to with giants like the Cold Steel, which this virtually has no forward and backward or side to side. But then again, I haven't really used this much. I think I was collecting some uh, plant samples when a buddy of mine asked for me to uh, cut a vine, and uh, he kind of held it, and he was like, yeah, just saw into it. And I was like, oh, that'll hurt the blade. And then everyone laughed at me. It's not funny! I want to keep my knives pristine! Um, yeah, I, I kind of have a thing about buying really high-grade knives and then, for some reason, being too afraid to use them. But the Axis lock, all of these other locks, the Triad locks, all have a lockback mechanism back here that you have to depress. So, in essence, it basically takes two hands to close. You can close it with one hand, but it, it's a little risky. You might get the, ch uh, the, the chain chomp. You might get the finger chomp. With this, you might also get the finger chomp, although I am the Blade Whisperer, so I don't get chomped. But... A lot of idiots who will uh, use it will notice that the only way to disengage the lock is to take your thumb, place it on this little doohickey, and then do that. And it has kind of a detent at the bottom. You can actually kind of make it a puppet using this. You can, hi everyone, my name is Benchmade. Um, and you can, see, I don't, I'm kind of sitting behind a camera, so my arm is fully extended right now. But in essence, yeah, you can... Flick it out, and then quickly do a return. There you go. I don't like doing that, because near the end of that rotation, 
I kind of feel it knocking against the plastic, and it doesn't. It, it feels like it's going too far. That might hurt the lockup. Um, other than that, the ergonomics are like really nice. It's actually it's quite small, but the ergonomics of it really aren't all that bad. I've heard a lot of people complaining recently, actually, even about the. Um, I heard someone complaining about the uh, the ergonomics of Spider Co. And I was like, what in good what in good golly molly are you talking about? That. Is, and he even said, nobody puts their fingers up on the jimping like that. All right, I put my finger and my thumb up on the jimping every day of the week, son. I finger my jimping every day. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. This is incredibly comfortable. Um, this is not as comfortable as either of those other two knives that I've shown, but it, there's nothing wrong with it. It is um, incredibly, uh, it is incredibly comfortable for a knife still. There are many knives that I've held that were more chunky and weird than this. However... This, uh, it feels kind of thin. I think I would not want to use this for too long if I was doing an extended task, you know, like carving or something like that, or, um, trying to process wood with it, which I wouldn't recommend, but, again, a lot of people who are really into this, this brand of knives, Benchmade, will tell you that you can literally, you know, uh, you can stab a man in the skull and it won't break off, and so, I don't know, maybe you can do a lot of lumber processing with it and build a, a shelter in the woods. I have not decided yet whether or not I want to keep this as a crown jewel of my collection, a unicorn, just inside of my, um, pelican case, or if I really want to take this thing out and just beat the hell out of it. Part of me feels like it'd be way more respectful to my friend to beat the hell out of it. I haven't decided, but you can see, yeah, I'm a little nervous because a lot of people, when playing with that axis lock, they get the finger chomp. Um... It's got a little lanyard hole. My buddy is into lanyards. I'm not. I don't ever put my lanyard in the hole. That's not what I do. Um, eh, you know, I actually haven't clipped this in my pocket and carried it around to see whether or not it, it would feel good. But I imagine it does. It uh, is so incredibly lightweight that uh, one of the tests I have for knives is whether or not I can sleep on my side and not feel uncomfortable. But then again, maybe that's just me. I can also do that with one of these in my pocket. Um, depending. If it was my jeans, no, but I rarely wear jeans anymore. I'm all about them 5.11s now, because, you know, apparently Tolstoy is just mall ninja as hell. Um, and then I guess, uh, the other question is, what you might be interested in seeing is, the, the money shot. Is it, uh, is it a good cutter? Well, me and my buddy were kind of getting into this because we couldn't really figure out if there, if it was a good cutter, if it wasn't a good cutter. Um, obviously all Benchmade products really are noted for shipping, just razor bloody sharp. Um, but, let me see if I can find, I'm digging through, hmm, yeah, sure, why not? There we go, yeah, they came up real nice. I'm digging through a, um, uh, Rhodia notebook, or a Rhodia notepad that I use. Rhodia is, um, one of the highest, gr um, grades of both paper and notebooks that you can get your hands on. It's made with, a uh, 90-gram French Clairefontaine paper, and, uh, I just had a whole bunch of weird notes on here. Um, some of these are like the stats from The Evil Within and me trying to figure out how much money I would have to, or how much currency in that game I'd have to spend to get the upgrades that I wanted. So I just ripped off that page and I'm going to go ahead and give it the knife test. So this is 90 gram paper. This is um, pretty sturdy paper that has a uh, kind of powerful glaze on it and we'll uh, try to get that in frame. See, we're having problems. Okay, so it does cut, however, I feel that it's either because he's dulled it or because it's shipped with some sort of flat grind, um, in which case they think that it's a workhorse knife, whereas, honestly, to me, this kind of comes off as some sort of, like, cyberpunk holdout weapon, if that makes any sense. This seems like something that you would see in Cyberpunk 2022 that the mysterious robot would be carrying for the last-ditch effort to blah. Yeah, there's a lot of tearing. Uh, I'm thinking I might go over this with a whetstone, but I honestly don't know if my whetstone is good enough for this kind of blade. It might just need to be stropped. See, that was a fairly decent cut, but by comparison, let's compare that to the Spidey. Spider Co. Tenacious. With a much fatter blade, though. That It might also just be the blade geometry. Oh, that's so fucking sexy. Um, let's compare that to something that has much more similar geometry, which is the cold steel counterpoint. I'm trying to find a place where I haven't really gotten deep into the cut. Yeah. Kind of cuts at an angle, probably because it has a bit of a burr. Ah, it's so good. It does cut at an angle, doesn't it? Let's fold it over. See if double the, double the, oh, yeah. 
So, um, he basically told me that he put that thing at work through a lot of damn boxes. So, part of me wants to kind of fix it up and make it an EDC, simply because it's so incredibly hipster, and I must admit, in a way, I am very incredibly hipster. Part of me thinks it's not that big a deal, I shouldn't risk damaging the blade with my very, very one dot in knife sharpening that I do have. The, my very slim knife sharpening skills. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet, but either way, hit me up in the comments, let, let me know what you think that uh, I should do with my knives, with my nibs, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. Oh, fuck, I can't say it on camera, we're going to get demoted. What's the word? Um, God damn it, the neighbors upstairs are, like, running their fucking washing machine right now. And it's loud as shit, and it fucks with my concentration. I'll just edit that shit out. Anyway, so... No, don't edit it out. No, no, no. No, dude, you know, we're you, you know, no, you know the YouTube, the new YouTube no, shit, man. No, we're not editing it out, brother. Oh, no, fuck, but, um, we made, we made fun of this knife for, like, fucking forever. Just bear with me, just bear with me. You, you ready? You, you ready? Yeah? Duh!